Hi, everybody. Welcome to the 21st episode of Two Comma Coffee Club with our wonderful guest, 2020, and the hosts, Valerie, Lene, and me. And today we're going to be concentrating on the Neville Goddard Summit. And I am so <laughs> excited. <laughs> Have you made? Have you started making popcorn yet? <laughs> <laughs> We're getting the machine. Sure. You know, so right. <laughs> we'll get them sweets over here, like the flavored beans, and we. I yeah. think we should go all out and try really loads of different flavors. <laughs> Anchovies, my favorite. Anchovy, Anchovy popcorn. popcorn. All right. You are alone. <laughs> you never know. You never know. You never know. So uh, the summit, of course, will start at the beginning of June. It's a weekend in June with about, we're, we count, uh, the Tukama Coffee Club, we count as one, pres one presenter. Yeah, we're one. But, so there's a total of nine presenters, 20 and seven others. And it's going to be quite awesome. And 20 is our kickoff for the, for the summit. And then we're going to go have a number of the other presenters. And some we've already done shows with and we'll replay those so that people can get a taste of what they'll be experiencing from each person so it's going to be fun this month so you're wanting to talk about the underlying theme of the summit cool so for me <laughs> there's Lene hi <laughs> <laughs> love your hair <laughs> so so for, for me, what's really cool with this is watching so many cool people come together and share their experiences because I love how Neville always taught from experience and how the principles never changed. And, and, and that's going to be my big thing, just really getting back to, you know, the you guys know my love affair with philosophy drives technology. Mm hmm and it's like right now, like, like I, I know some of y'all are on iPad-y things, some are on laptop-y things. Uh, we've got this Zoom-y thing going on. It's going to go up on Facebook and YouTube. But it's how many people use the same technology, not for evil purposes, but for like distractions just to stay busy forever versus, I mean, the number one thing shared on Facebook are cat photos, right? Wow. We're competing with cat photos. How cool is this? <laughs> That's and, Valerie. She posts the majority of them. That's right. It's true. It's true. true. <laughs> it's true. So, 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 so you're, I'll tell you something funny. We were buying uh, seafood marinara, like mixture of seafood bits to put in the pasta yesterday. Mm. Mm, and we went gorgeous. up to the lady and I said, give me like 200 grams worth. And she had like 303 grams in the, in the bag. And I said, no, 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 I'm easy. I'm easy. I'm easy. You know, like just let it there. You know, some people are real picky, aren't they? Right. And immediately I knew she was one of the picky people. Victoria and I look at each other and, it, and, it's, and, it, and it's so cool because if we needed an accountant, I would want her doing our books <laughs> because her way of perceiving the world has all that. And so her philosophy drives her technology a different way. Yeah. And, and, and we all always have philosophies driving technologies, whether it's the iPad, whether it's how much seafood marinara gets dished into the bag. The philosophy, she's very precise. I mean, I bet her kids, when they leave for school, the ties are just right and so on. Like me, I, I never had the tie on right. I mean, like, I was lucky to get my underwear on right. But it was just, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was you, know, you, know, you know, fashion was always a creative expression for me. And so with the whole Neville Summit, I'm really honored to kick it off. And I'm really excited. You guys are there. And then we've got some other goodies, too. I'm not going to name names. But it's like, we, you know, like the, 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 the fact that I can start with, here's some easy things to do. Here are the simple principles to, that follow. And now when you watch everyone after you know, the initial show that I do, it's, it's like, Oh my God, you get to see the principles in action through all you guys. Yeah. You got to have the foundation. Yeah. That's very you important. Got it. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. got it. So, yeah. where, what are you? So, are you, you going to be talking about um, the Pearl of Great Price? I think you said to me. The, per, the Pearl will be there as well. Yep. Because you need that. That To me, that <sighs> that's the number one part of the philosophy because as you guys know you guys are in the law of attraction by neville goddard group 
when someone shows up and they sort of almost buy the pearl, but there's an exception, but what if and kind of, it's like, dude, no wonder your life blows. You know, I, I, I want you to soar. But as long as you go, everything in my life except for these three things and this kind of thing, it's like, you got to buy the pearl. You got to buy the pearl. And you got to. And, and it's not laborious, as you guys know. I saw you light up when you said it. I love, I love the pearl of great price. Before um, I done my little free seven manifesting videos with you last summer, right. um, I came across Neville Goddard's The Pearl of Great Price and I listened to his audio on, on YouTube. And I was at a turning point thinking, what am I going to, I, I, I want to do something. I've got to do something. And when I, li and I was a tarot reader and that was my job. That's what I did. That was my living. I got it. And as soon as I, and I was drawn to hear the Pearl of Great Price. It was the first lecture I'd ever heard. Oh my and God. And it was, and I was just like, oh, wow. And right That's then intense. and there, so I was there. just like, That's it. I'm done. I'm totally done. And I stopped reading tarot at that very so let, moment. So, so let me ask, right? Because this is so important for people to hear. Are you living under a bridge now? It doesn't look like it. No. Are you, are you doing all, yeah. Has giving, has given up the tarot readings for you. Uh, is it, has it killed you? No, it's made uh, you're me not, sore. <laughs> it's, it's made sore as in like an eagle. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you think when I remember first <laughs> emailing you and since then I've done four books and now we've come together doing the two comma coffee club and oh my god we are, I, we've got so many things in the pipeline we're so excited about everything we can't bring it out quick enough we've got so many things that we're doing yep yep yep, yep. and I've done manifesting mastery and then I did dream driven day and that really opened my eyes. The subtlety in that really hit home. And the, but the pearl, if, if you don't buy the pearl, you won't, manif you won't consciously manifest anything you want. It's that simple. Your yeah, it's, desires all, it's all hit and miss. That's right. Yeah. Well, you, you, you know about the Tommy gun, right? Chicago, yeah. right, right? Way back in the old days, 19... 10, 19, 20, 1930, the Tommy gun came out. The Tommy gun was originally supposed to be a military machine gun, a handheld, the first handheld machine gun, right? If I'm correct, you know, I, I could be a little off on this. But, but so they, so, so the guy developed it, Thompson, or the General Thompson, I forget which, but, but they looked at it in the military and they said, you can't hit shit with this. <laughs> so we don't want it. And, and, and so, and so the, the people that took it were the gangsters, right? You could buy them in hardware stores, right? So, so back during Prohibition, you could buy your Tommy gun in the hardware store. And, and the and slogan was spray and pray. Yeah, because you're, you're not hitting targets. You're just pulling triggers, right? And without the pearl, you've got a Tommy gun. You're spraying and praying. You're hoping you hit something. I mean, what? Yeah. You know, is it, is it going to yeah. be raccoon for dinner or lamb? I, I, right. You know, lamb's a lot funner. <laughs> so uh <laughs> yeah so that, yes so, so that's it you know the pearl the pearl the pearl oh. yeah that's it's really that's right well known in in the neville community isn't it because we all say you gotta buy the pearl and it's just a phrase that all of us know and that all of us use and it just basically means it's the success or the failure of your imagination you know i got kicked out of a neville goddard group because they, so they were into spoon bending and I was into the pearl and we had a showdown. <laughs> I, I swear to God, I swear to God, this is a true story. So, 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 bending. So, 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 I, so, I, so I was in this, this Neville Goddard group and they got in us with spoon bending. And of course, I thought, well, what the fuck? I'll, I'll fiddle with this just for fun. So I take Victoria to the local off shop and I buy used spoons. And it's like, fuck, these aren't bending. They might, oh, sorry about swearing. <laughs> these aren't bending. I must have the wrong spoon, that kind of thing. So it's like, <laughs> so I'm monkeying with the spoons because I, yeah, I want to be one of the cool kids, right? And then, of course, I'm bringing up the pearl. And it's like, you really don't fit in here. <laughs> yeah, believe it or not, it was like 10 years. It was only like 10 years or so ago. It was right before I started up. Uh, my law of attraction, my Neville Goddard group, no one was talking about the pearl. No one. 
they, they were they were busy bending spoons and, <laughs> and, and like, <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> I can't even remember the, group, the name of the group. But, oh I wonder God. if they're still sitting there with their spoon. <laughs> they're sw I don't know. <laughs> it to your nose I bet they are. are. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping they found the pearl. Meanwhile, I mean, play with spoons. Out. You know, that's the fun thing. If you want to play with spoon bending, you play with spoon bending. I mean, like what? Yeah, I mean, there's there's only so much you can do when you double your income and work half the time. Double your income, work half the time. Oh, well, let's, and, let's try yeah, bending yeah. a spoon for something to do. Right? I've got and, an extra and, hour. <laughs> and, and what is this obsession with ladders? I mean, this is another one that oh I come across God, in the that... groups. And it's not the ladder exercise that you teach, which is helping to help people understand the difference between visualizing yourself mm -hmm. from a distance and seeing yourself as the center of what you're imagining when you're doing a feel a real right. session. But there's this other obsession about something to do with <laughs> the cosmic, the great cosmic meaning of the ladder or if it shows up in your ladder. dream or if you think about a ladder or and visualize it before you go to sleep and then you dream about it. What What is this telling you? And I've seen so many posts about this fucking ladder. It's like, what is yep. going, going on with people? You know, these these obsessions that people have trying to understand. have a this. ladder right here sitting in front of me. Oh my God, you did it. You, you, you did, did the Edo here. Locker I Jr. ladder it. thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I have an orange ladder. I don't know what that means. The color is very symbolic. That sounds <laughs> funny because I was just looking up at it. And I'm like, hey, that's a ladder. And she's talking about ladders right now. I like hoops. So, so, you're, so I, I'm looking at I've got a roto yeah, like go. in front of me. You know, you know, and, and then Lene's wearing hoop earrings. Mm. Yeah, always. <laughs> Boom. That's so cool. They're pretty too. So, what are they made you know, They are. So yeah but you know there's so many you know there's so many things people actually um get you know get caught up in you know like like the discussion about you know things that have evolved in neville's philosophy how can the you know she they you know the person who kind of they got that it was the eternal truth but then there's always looking for like well maybe there's a little something here that i missed or something there that i missed it's just like why not just do stick to what you're learning and like go in there go in there and dive into that is there really something outside yourself that somebody else may have added a little thing to that's going to make it make all the difference i don't know everybody's going to find it their own way but at the same time you can get very um caught up in going down that particular rabbit hole to see what this person said and that person said and 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 after a while you can you know you end up with a lot of interesting pieces but somehow where are you <laughs> all this you know with all the you know with all the pieces that you know and you know because because one of the things is a lot of times either that we have posted and somebody's responded or we've responded it's a very common thing where someone says Oh, this is exactly what I needed to hear today. Mm. Now, what's interesting about that is you manifested that because totally. it didn't come to you. Totally. You know, it was not something that just showed up out of the blue that, you know, you fell over and it was just what you needed to hear. It's not outside you. You got that because it came really from you. So it's, it's kind of backwards. You know, and, 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 they've got, and they've got to get that to win. Because if yeah. they don't get that's a win, then they're going, well, no, no, I didn't manifest that. What do you mean? You didn't, well, I didn't make a vision board. I didn't get sticky tape on my fingers. I didn't super glue my lips shut while I'm doing affirmations. It's like, oh, my God, yeah. none of that matters. Yeah, what matters is you imagined getting an answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. suddenly you guys did a show or put up a comment or a post or, or, or we did whatever we did. Oh, my God, how cool. I yeah. love not being in charge. I, I love knowing I can I can put a couple buns in the oven, get on here with you guys, and we're going to talk about whatever we talk about. And yeah. I can guarantee someone's going to go, oh, my God, you guys said exactly what I needed to hear today. Yeah. 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 Nice. That's, that's right. <laughs> it was right there for them just waiting. You know, that was kind of it. But that's – but you run into so many things like that, you know, on this particular – in this particular situation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the more 
the more you go in, the more you go into this, the more, in a lot of ways, the more I just have found for myself, uh, and I and I think you all have too, ladies and uh, twenty, is the more you do this, the more clear things just start getting. They just somehow the other stuff just starts looking like. No, that's kind of not it, you know, and then you can really get a sense of, of that is the pearl, you know, when you feel that solidity, when you feel that you're not, that your pearl isn't, I don't know, it's called, my pearl got loose in the setting, you know, it's kind of like, it's, nice. you know, that, then I can kind of come back and get still again and straight, you know, go, go into, you know, get into the state that I really need to be in at that particular time. So the more you do that, it's, it's a, it's a remarkable thing, but the more you wear yourself into that, the more you become aware of what you, you're manifesting as you go and what you're, you may want to revise as you go. You know, it's the things we've seen from our, the guests we've had on like Anya Emke, who was also going to be presenting at the summit and awesome. some, you know, who is incredible. Yes, she is awesome. And, um, you know, things that others have posted, um, you know, that they, that they keep it going, that they're always, you know, they're always there. They always, that pearl is solid. That pearl is, is very solid for them, the more they do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I noticed when, when you talk about the pearl, not, like it, it, it doesn't fit, <laughs> right? When it doesn't fit, there's something wrong. So, so we've got this whole thing going around the world. We'll call it the loogie, right? And so the loogie's going on <laughs> and we've got lockups and all this crazy stuff. And, and as a quote unquote side effect, one of the things that I've noticed is a lot of people, they've picked up a little weight right? Good, bad, indifferent. Hey, you know, nothing else to do. Let's make some carbs, right? So, yeah. so that happens, right? Now, when you, when you put on a little weight and you go, right, let me go put on my fancy shirt. So you go and you put on your fancy shirt and you go, whoa, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> what did Victoria do to my fancy shirt? She, 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 she shrunk it again. Right? How does she do this? Right? She and she'll say, "Oh no, I haven't washed the fancy shirt in a year." <laughs> right? You, you shrunk it a year ago and didn't tell me. Right? <laughs> and, and, but we all know the truth. The truth, the truth is, you know, I ate a little carbs, got a little fat. Fancy shirt don't fit. And, and what happens? You get frustrated. Now, what am I going to wear? <laughs> I'm going to have to look like a dork. Thank you, Victoria, for shrinking the fancy shirt, right? <laughs> <laughs> but in the end, and, and this is what I noticed with the pearl. When, when, yeah. when, when you buy the pearl, your, your, your clothing fits. Like Neville says, you know, you put, on a, you put on a state, it's a new suit, and gradually it becomes yours. When you put on the pearl, it's easy. There's no it's one else fun. to blame. <laughs> There's no one else to blame. Exactly. No. <laughs> but, the, but the minute you add something in, and then it's like, oh, the, it doesn't feel right, Mr. 20. I'm trying my affirmations too. Oh, yeah. I'm doing my affirmations every day for four hours while I put the sticky tape on the photos. And it's like, wow, man, you must be busy. Right? <laughs> Versus, right, when you drop all that, it fits. When you drop all that, it fits. When you drop yeah. all that, it fits. Yeah, yeah drop the yeah. extra weight. Just buy the pearl. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. See, since doing that, since buying the pearl, it it doesn't. I. Although you're more focused, I have this carefree attitude of I really don't give a shit. <laughs> I really yep. don't give a shit because I just totally know that it's all going to work out. I just, there are, is no doubt, there's no fear, whatever, whatever happens, happens. And that's it. There is, uh, the, people seem to get really psyched up on, I must do my affirmations. I write it on a post-it note so I can read it here. I'll put it on a post-it note so I can read it there. I've been there and done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, had no, it was horrible. And, 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 when you actually buy the pearl, the it's it's only trusting yourself. You've only got to trust yourself, and that's the easiest thing you can do. Yeah, that's right. Pearls unless are, my pearls are my, posted. My, that's right. <laughs> or unless my astrology, my astrology reading told me that I was badly aspected today, and you know, not to leave, not to get out of bed for you know for <laughs> the next six days or sign any contracts. So you you know. It, <laughs> that that piece can be a very interesting, you know. Sometimes it's a guide. There's reasons for, you know, there's good astrology 
not so good astrology, but in the end, what is really bringing about what, you know, and I've been pondering this a lot recently because we sort of get the idea and I, I've been involved, I was fairly, you know, I had a lot of interest. I studied a little and I had a lot of interest in Eastern astrology, which has some fascinating, you know, if you're into that, there's some interesting differences between it and the Western astrology mm. that we know. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, the point with that is that is that you begin to wonder which is really happening in what way? Are, are the planets, you know, and the signs and all those piece parts and houses really influencing us and the, the events and that were, you know, when people look at, oh, what was happening on this day in 1835 when there was this war going on in this particular place? Look what was going on in the sky. But, or is it that the, the states that people were in because, if we, if our awareness of being is God, if we are the operant power, then we are the planets, we are the houses, we are the, we are the aspects, we are all of it. So, yeah. which is, you know, so when you start to see that in that perspective, the other way the pearl is going to go a little wonky and it's in the, in the setting, you know, it's going to kind of go, mm -hmm. but the other way the pearl is solid because you begin to realize you're all of that you're all of that and if those things are showing up seemingly out there secondary cause then you know then you're giving that yourself away to that so if you're on your confidence in your faith in god is measured as neville said by your confidence in in yourself mm -hmm. that includes that too that includes that too i, so, I like yeah. I like that stuff though, because one, I feel like, you know, it, it's cool going back and seeing, oh, you know, on at this time frame, this is how this was and all of that. I think it's just part of the story of life that we get to experience. Not so much when you're right, applying meaning, going that deep into, well, why, you know, why were the planets aligned this way to make this happen? <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, just fun stuff, right? And that's why I still like, like Val. You, me and you have talked about, like I'm a Leo. Oh God, oh, that, so that explains it's, everything. It's, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I can tell you, Scorpio. That's why she had a haircut. Yeah, no, absolutely. That stuff is it's tons, you know, it's tons of fun, it and that fun. you know when yeah. you have the right perspective, when you have right. that understanding. But see, it's different, and you can play with it differently. Yeah, too when yeah because yes that stuff is lots of fun and it's certainly fun to talk about no question you know but it's 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 kind of noticing the difference or in how much you're you know you're you're guided by it kind of and thing, when i know, that reflects people when i worked with people and they come to me and they're like you know i'm not able to consciously manifest and do this and this that's when i start peeling away like what else are they believing in their life and that's where mm -hmm. like the tarot and astrology and all of that comes into factor and you see how attached they are to it but once you peel that away you realize okay i'm the operant power i brought these into my experience to have fun with it doesn't mean take it serious you know all of that but if you then flip it like i'm the operant power i brought this awesome horoscope into my life i'm reading it it's funny as fuck you know there's a whole different ball game you're playing there and, um, it, you know, whereas it doesn't now interfere with your power like it was before. Well, that's right. It doesn't interfere with your power. You see, that's the, that's the key. That's the key. So that makes it, you know, it's much more fun to play with it. Do you know, funny oh. you say that because since I read the and listened to the pearl of great price and i my business was tarot reading i've not paid it one single bit of attention and in fact i've started selling all of my stuff <laughs> all of my decks and cards i just yeah, yeah. i have no interest and it's really freeing because you felt like it, it's funny when you feel you feel a bit brainwashed you're meant to believe in something and that's why people like in our last episode, we were talking about how people had to experience some really terrible tragedy, for example, in order to then buy the pearl. But nobody has to do that. 
<laughs> it's all it's all within you. And so yeah. you don't need to give your power away to to anything. And since tarot come up in, in the Pearl of Great Price, I don't have to believe in that anymore. Yeah. That doesn't rule anybody's life anymore. Mm -hmm. Neither does any religion, neither does somebody telling me that if I eat too many carbs, I'll put on weight. It's, it's exact, every, all of that's exactly the same. <laughs> I well, like yeah. when, so, so your faith in God is measured by your confidence in you. Yeah. So, so when I grew up, I got to believe in different things. You know, the Catholic church, uh, <laughs> Eastern religion, meditation, all these different things. And at some point I got, I got to go, right. What do I, yeah, you believe in anything else is almost like an ongoing commitment versus belief in you is an ongoing emergent yeah. moment by moment basis. Yeah. Do I believe in me or not right now? Mm. Yes or no. If not, don't pass go. Don't collect two hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, you game Go over. straight to jail. <laughs> Go straight to jail. Do not come out <laughs> unless you get your just visiting card. <laughs> exactly. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You know, it just it it just shows up that way, and there's but there's so many things that people get very excited about the thinking and their power over to. And it's so, it, you know, and then you spend a lot of time saying, no, that's kind of not how it works, you know, because people have not made that connection mm. between what they're thinking, what they're imagining and the, their thoughts and their emotions um, and their actions are driven by their states. And in fact, somebody, Somebody was posting somewhere, um, I don't know if it was a class or a webinar, it, it, anxiety doesn't come from your, they said from your mind, it comes from your body. They were saying it like that because they think probably the nervous system. And I'm thinking, no, it doesn't come from either of those. It actually comes from your state. So it's, it's it, you know, it has, it has, now I, and I see this more and more in my understanding of that. Is, mm. is very different now. Um, you know, in fact, that the fact that all these, that all these things are driven by your state of your state of consciousness and which where your awareness is. So isn't that exciting? Yeah. It's so empowering to just think, well, what else can I explore? What else is possible? Let's let's try and go, let's do this, let's see where this goes. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's it's just seeing where that is seeing where things go. But you're but you're not doing it from a, from that same sense it's more like that curiosity or that excitement about it it's it's mm. a different it's a different feeling you know it's when you do things without desperation because mm. there's it's coming from you know that's a dream driven day thing too mm. that you start to see where you're where everything is really coming from it's the driver for yeah. all for all the things so that's, yeah. that's definitely the fun thing I just had this like mini revelation just now um, because, you know, I wrote my book about anxiety and when you were just saying all that, I was thinking, you know, what's funny, and this goes back to applying meaning, right? We apply a bad meaning to being anxious. Like it's bad, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Theologically, we see that reaction in the body. But of course, it comes from the state, right? But still, you're having that reaction within the body as well as mind. So have you ever been like super excited about something? Like you cannot wait to experience yeah. something? That's fucking anxiety. But why do we look at that as anticipation? anxiety wow. versus, oh my God, I'm scared right now. It's literally your body reacts the same. So it's like a positive anxiety yeah so it's I, anticipation, I think you were going to put it? a positive isn't it like, like a, a, a I, I call it energy yeah energy. yeah yeah it builds as, up if, if we want to drop it even further we could call it amplitude yeah mm -hmm. because energy has so much other baggage with it but amplitude <laughs> what, what's, what's what's your amplitude of experience 
Mm. You know, when 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 That's when a guy cool. has low testosterone, it's been shown that he actually experiences more gray than color. I find that fascinating Whoa. because the world literally, literally mm. becomes more grayscale than color. Wow! And, and so so we can't really blame it on testosterone because why mm. is the testosterone low? Yeah, it's it's, it's it, you're right. So we go back to state again. But mm. you'll notice, I look at you, Lene, right now, and you've lit up. Right. Mm. Literally, there was less gray scale in you and more color. When we look at the Apostle Paul, it, when he went from Saul to Paul, what happened? The scales dropped off his eyes. Mm. Oh, yeah. Ah. OK, mm. the, the, the world is, oh, my God, so much more detailed, vivid. Ah, boom, boom, boom. You just took a sip of something out of a cup. You don't go out and buy soft drinks in gray scale cups. Your, your cup has red, white and blue on it. Yeah, look at that, right? See, that's yeah. colorful. It's 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 wow, right? Your earrings, right? You're you're not wearing boring earring. I mean, like, Never. You know, you know, you know, boom, right? <laughs> and, and there, and that's the thing because if we if we label amplitude as anxiety, fuck, I gotta I gotta calm down. I gotta get stuck in the muck. I've gotta like, okay, slow breathing, slow breathing. Take my slow Xanax. Breathing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, calm is not a Xanax deficiency, right? Mm -hmm. On the other hand, whenever you get, <laughs> we're designed to have amplitude and we're designed to have little amplitude. We're designed yeah. to have ups and downs and sideways and all sorts of different size waves in our lives. Or we can just like try to decrease the talk slow or uh, <laughs> brain waves. Oh my God. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That really yeah. bugged me <laughs> when you were talking about that. I was really like, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, know. I think That's right. when someone's trying to change their state from an anxious state, like they're fearing something in the moment, one, you're, you're at war with yourself now because you're like, this is a bad feeling. I need to get rid of it in order to move. <laughs> when you and can need be like, this is this is a reaction right now from my state mm -hmm. and it's not good or bad. It just is right now. And then you can move and that's so, it. So, so, so I notice when people go to war, they'll have a lot of amplitude. Okay. So fuck, we'll call it anxiety, but it's amplitude. It's the size of the wave and yeah. they'll go, I have to slow down. It's like slowing down makes the wave smaller. I, I, I get so kidding. So I take notes on things and I point this stuff out. It's like, no, no, that's not what I mean, Mr. 20. And it's like, what you really need to do is speed up. Mm. You know, if you speed up, okay, you now can. you're surfing with the waves. You paddle out. You, know, you get on the wave and you ride it back. But if you try to slow down, it crushes you. So, you know, speed up, get out there, hop on the wave. And then you've got that energy to do something because you've got the energy to do something. You gave yourself the energy, quote unquote, the amplitude. Now what? Oh, I'm imagining the amplitude is bad. It's, it's like when a guy thinks about talking to a girl, yo, how you doing, right? And so it's like, like so there's a pretty girl. And it's like, whoa, amplitude, fuck anxiety. Can't talk to her, 90-year-old <laughs> virgin, right? Yeah, yeah, you guys know, you guys are girls. Yeah. You've seen guys do this. Versus see girl, amplitude goes up, more color, testosterone in the world. It's like, this is when I walk over and say, hello, right? <laughs> <laughs> and the excitement shows up, right? Or we could call it anxiety, slide under the rock, and let's go learn pickup artist techniques for the next 10 years. You know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, horrible. Yeah. 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 When I was when I was a teenager, there was this boy and he came and knocked on my door. He rode his bicycle from one side of the town to the other to come to see me at my house. And by the time I got there, my friends were with me and we opened the door. Oh and no. We giggled. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and you know what he did? He got back on his bike, rode down the road and fell off it. Oh poor guy. And, 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 and now, four years later in ManifestingMasteryCourse.com, <laughs> lesson one. Exactly. <laughs> I know that kid. I know that guy. I, I bet know he's that done guy. MM. <laughs> I hope he has. 
Because uh, yeah. we were giggling because it was like, oh my God, this boy's shown up for you, Miss. Like, you know what I mean? It wasn't any exactly. negative thing. It was like, oh my God, he's actually got on his bike and he rode all that way. <laughs> and he got so nervous that he got back on his bike and fell off. <laughs> yeah, you know, l let's be honest. I'm a guy and let's pretend I was 15 years old and I ride my bike to come see you. And I get there and you and all your girlfriends are standing there deadpan. Just staring. <laughs> we, we don't want any amplitude going on, right? So, so there's no amplitude in you guys. You're just all flat, sine wave, listening to brainwave recordings. I'm going to look at them and go, <laughs> these women are nuts, right? <laughs> get back on my bike and go, right? Yeah. yeah because Stop it's a different that. meaning. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Versus what's, whenever we can accept and not label, we've got amplitude. Oh, my God. Now it's like, this is fun. You know, there's mm. the girls. They're giggling. That's a good sign. Right, they're alive, even better. Right, I like talking to living girls. I mean, Dylan, <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, it's true, it's true. But that's being able to write to have that spirit, that playful spirit with things, as yeah. opposed to there's a, a wall between you and what you where you're trying to go. You know, there's this kind of barrier and you're standing there kind of, should I put, should I try to move? Through, can I move through this wall? Can I actually move through this wall? Or do I have to, you know, just kind of try to find my way around the wall or do I sort of back away from the wall or turn away from something, you know? And, and when there's that fluidity, there is no wall. That just goes away. Mm. So it's, it. it's, it's the, that, is, that is really the difference. And then of course, when you recognize that you have the pearl, you're solid, you know, you, you know that you bought the pearl and you can play wherever you go. It's a very it's so it's so different to have that feeling, that light feeling of playfulness with everything. And it'll throw people because because if you have a light attitude and the person you happen to be encountering in that moment does not, they think they think. What have you been bewitched with? You know, it's like a, a really, you know, uh, a, a really weird thing to a lot of people that somebody can just sort of, you know, not take these things, not take these things. You know, what what place did you just, what facility did you just get out of? You know, they don't know. So Do you like, get weird looks because I get weird, I get weird reactions sure. all the time because we're in diff. I'm indifferent now. So when people are really having a, this drama conversation about, oh, did you know about them and blah blah blah, I just think, oh. And I just don't partake in anything anymore. Or somebody's telling me how ill they are. So I'm sitting there just revising mm. the whole conversation and going mm. about my business. Yes. I just don't react anymore. And people think that I'm ignorant. <laughs> they think well, I don't yeah. care. But, well, but you I know, don't part, care because you're that, just. Yeah. I don't you want to have fun? When they talk about being ill, imagine them talking about like dessert. <laughs> it, it, yeah. So, 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 so there's no no health or illness kind of war going on. Yeah. But you just imagine them talking about this. I swear to God. Like I, I'll sit there and I'll go, "Wow, pumpkin pie, cool." <laughs> like I'll, I'll just be in there, like, "Oh yeah, man, all right." And, and sure enough, it's like I mean, like sooner or later, I mean, the, the conversation goes, "Oh, you, you you can't imagine the Twinkie I just ate," and it's like that means a couple different things in my brain. But like, all right, whatever. <laughs> yeah, you're into sweets, I'm into savories, you know, just yeah, whatever. But 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 it, but it's but it's fun because if you can revise in weird ways. It, it totally eliminates the war. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just thinking of my job and like how funny that is. You could have so much fun tonight. Oh like every minute of every day. Well, I literally hear it all day long. I'd, I'd dress up as a clown for my next conference meeting. <laughs> just sit nice. there like normal. Uh, oh my oh, gosh. Shit. Parfait. I love parfait. Totally <laughs> take the mick out of, <laughs> out of the loogie. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Oh God, that's wonderful. Lots of play. So yeah, they're talking about if they're and if you're imagining that, you know, that's kind of a way of imagining in a loving way for them. Yeah, <laughs> it's just it to make it all, you know, sweet and desserty and and uh, that's you know that that's what you're, they're going to be talking about, not about. And next time I show up and they're eating condition. pumpkin pie, I'll know exactly. why. Exactly. 
Yeah. It, it, and it just takes, it's funny because people will, they'll feel bad about eating sweets. So it's like, yeah, I feel bad about eating sweets. Don't want to think about sweets. I'll think about the loogie. I'll think about the unemployment, the new world order. Versus like, right, what's the least damaging fun thing that I can imagine for them? Pumpkin pie. Ooh. Pecan you know, pie. Next thing you know, just... Just, just let them do what they do. <laughs> yeah, they, they'll, they'll, yeah they'll, they'll catch the hook. Yeah. So I notice I'm sinking deeper and deeper into my lounge suite as I sit here. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Well, that's what it's for. You know, just sink, just sink nice and deep. In but it's true. It's true. You know, and that, and that's the thing. It's like, it's like you do feel, I've been in situations like that with people who are, bickering and fussing and I'm just sitting there going, ha, ha. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like, it's, it's, it's so you, you just kind of feel like you're just watching this, this strange little drama episode going on with people and the things that they, that they worry in advance about, and, you know, make such a, uh, such a craziness in their life about these kind of strange things. Now, I, I will admit, I do get feisty some days, y'all seen it. Like when people make some ridiculous comments, <laughs> I just cannot. I'm just, yeah. <laughs> but, but then I realize I'm like, I'm having fun with it. Like I'm not, I'm not over here just blowing a gasket, you know, just pissed off. I just get real feisty. Like how dare them? Why are they talking like this? You know, Fe and feist, feisty is a yummy state thing for you. You know, how yeah, I have well, like loving teacher, loving husband. You know, you know, adding feisty anything in for you would be like me adding in garlic. Yeah, you know, like I, I, can, <laughs> you know, I can add garlic to anything. I you know. love... Yeah, yeah no. Feist, and that's why I, I don't like, I don't fight that state. I just, I'll, I'll tell Michelle and Valerie, I'm like, I am like feisty today. You cannot tell. Yeah, we and get a message in capital letters. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I'm feisty it's, as fuck today. Is what she normally says. <laughs> yeah, and but we like, go, it, yeah, it doesn't cool. feel like a war. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't <laughs> feel like I'm fighting anybody or myself or anything. Mm. I'm just. It's. I guess it's like personality-wise, feels like my way of. A, a different way of expressing another state that I have. When I we call, talk to you, when call, you're feeling feisty, you move. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, you move. There, there, there's the energy. There's that amplitude. Yeah, yeah. And then exactly. the speed shows up with it. <clears throat> nice. Yeah. So I mean, I, I just didn't want anybody watching like these these emotions and the amplitudes and stuff to think that there it's a state that I need to move from because it's not right or whatever. But like I have one, I named it feisty. <laughs> People get out of my way when I'm in that state, you know, like it gets shit done. <laughs> so Yeah. When we ask for things to be done to do with that TCC, when she's in a feisty mood, it's done. <laughs> she is, she emails it back in seconds, goes done. We go, what the <laughs> fuck? How can she do it that quick? Don't we Val? <laughs> Gosh, she's already Absolutely. done it. Absolutely. Yes, done. we'll get yeah. her. We've nailed that state. We get yeah. her more feisty. <laughs> but I think I think each of, of the three of us, I know, we, we all have our, our little extra <laughs> that state yeah. we're in. You uh, know? Yeah. And that, that's okay. That, you know, that's, mm -hmm. that's fine. Keep that reserve state. Because, I mean, just because we talk about having the I am state and then two or three other states, doesn't, you know, that you're mostly in and that does not leave out i know 20's got probably a little whole stash of states he doesn't even talk about yeah. what's the deck, I, I've, I've got a secret deck that's it <laughs> that's that's a right. secret a tarot deck, deck of states <laughs> right. a secret tarot deck. you know so yeah it's like we all we all kind of keep them in that's okay <laughs> you know I mean, if we only had three, I think life would be kind of, you know, but we have states for different occasions. Yeah. <laughs> Multi-personality disorders. <laughs> uh, one could say that. <laughs> I'm okay with that. And I'll be all loving and kind. Yeah. Like nothing just happened. And, you know, right before that, I'm wanting to pop a head off. 
Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like, you know, being a cat. I mean, it is. Isn't <laughs> it? I mean, look at your, look at your fur babies, you know? Yeah. It is, you know, it's like, right. You know, it's like a, like a, like a cat. And when the, the cat is like, all kind of, you pet a little too much. The murder mittens come out. Bah, you know? Murder mittens. <laughs> right. Murder mittens. Yeah. <laughs> so, I want oh, yeah. a pet. <laughs> right. <laughs> Toe beans mm. and murder mittens. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So that's that's what happens. So yeah. back to the summit. <laughs> yeah, that's good. We got yeah, we got so to know that sample, again. Here's a sample, everybody. Yeah, we we better <laughs> we we'd better get to talking about this. <laughs> so it's on the fourth of June, twenty twenty is going to kick it off, Ooh, huh. and he's going to be laying the principles. We are showing up on the Sunday. Is that right? Yep. I think so, yes. And we are going to be talking about banishing your money anxiety so that you can live from a state of wealth. And um, we actually had some comments about this saying how materialistic (laughs) we were, if I remember correctly. And hence the feisty state came about. (laughs) (laughs) That did did that in that moment. It was very funny. Um, but when you're living from a state of wealth, it doesn't just mean money, does it? It means a richness of everything. Yeah. You can have everything. Right. I mean, it's, 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 it is, it's right. It's seeing things as a wealth of things. Now they used to talk about that as abundance, but, but, but I actually think richness of experience is a, is a, is a, is a better term because abundance is, is you know, then say, well, you know, there's positive abundance and there's negative abundance, you know, maybe there's amplitude of abundance, but there's, but there's the, you know, it's, it's, when you talk about richness of experience, that's a different level of all of that, you know, because it's, it's what you, what you extract from the circumstances, how your state responds to circumstances, how you understand that you manifest in a particular circumstance. So, so the so really the richness of experience isn't because we're necessarily eating the chocolate cheesecake. It tastes yummy and it's a wonderful thing to be looking at, but that's coming from it, it, it's 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 the way we're manifesting and experiencing the taste of the chocolate cheesecake. So it's it's really the other way. Uh, you know, a lot of things that we think are coming outside to inside are really inside, inside to outside. So I really feel that, especially when we're talking about wealth and people really, we know that people have a lot of fears around becoming wealthy, be about keeping wealth, about spending, about what money is about, about actually going from being you know, average well off and getting, you know, getting along to making a bigger leap into becoming wealthy on the level it's understood in society. And um, then there's something I'm, I'm, I think I'm gonna be either doing a video or some kind of a rant about in relation to this, about if something, and this is, this is the, one of the big loaded topics for a lot of people who are in the healing, helping, and uh, you know, like teaching yoga, meditation, things like this, which is the idea that if something is spiritual, a, a piece of you know, like a book, a text, a, a something, you shouldn't charge for it. Just, but that's that so is cool. easy. Mm. But but the bigger misunderstanding is that makes it sound like there is a difference between something you label a spiritual text and everything else but when you have the pearl there's no fucking difference between that book and everything else that's your richness and experience right there so so this is one of those i'm i'm actually (laughs) this is a little kind of preview of of a uh, a longer thing i'm going to write to get into more specifics on it but over the years, because I've been, you know, like Michelle's been in the years in um, the esoteric and, you know, like tarot and the more mystical sides of, of uh, uh, um, spirituality and there, which is a very fascinating path, you know, because you learn a lot of really cool stuff um, and have many cool experiences. But, you know, but the, but the thing is that 
that when you start to understand that, then, then it doesn't make a difference if you charge or you don't charge. You know, sure, don't charge if you want and, and scrape by your whole life. But we live in a society where, you know, even to turn your key in your door or whatever and get in your car and go somewhere, it's going to cost you some money. So you have to be able to find a way, you know, you may not, you may say, I'm not charging for the book that I wrote, but the cost of published printing and, you know, making it into a book the time it took me to get from where I started to where I am holding this gathering, the this, but there's always these things play in and out, but, but everything involved, and maybe there was a time in an early society, an ancient time where that meant something, but if you take that, it just confuses the, the, the heck out of people. It just gets, you know, so they think that there's, then the guilt trip comes on to even try to charge money for something like that. Then there's a to guilt. everybody. Everybody yes. does what they want. Everyone do what you want to do. And if people are going to pay for it, they're going to pay for it. If they don't, then they don't get it, do they? That's it's that simple. Yeah. But it's up to what they're. It, it, it's all down to what they're imagining. And in what we cover in in the topic for the summit is we talk about we introduce the imagination. We talk about how to get rid of your anxieties, and then you talk about how to live from that state. And twenties cover covers all of the, the 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 foundation and the principles that's right and you're talking about you know based on your book you're going to imagine that you know the principles behind that so yeah. and and Linnea is talking about the anxiety aspect so we cover pretty you know in our in our session we cover a lot of those all the basic points around that and so I, go, so I, I, think I have a quick question yeah, because because we're gonna I'm gonna blast this out so that people, yeah, come check us out, join us in the summit. What's yeah. the number one reason why they should make sure that they are that they watch your segment of the summit? Number one reason, because if they want to change their lives and live from a state of wealth and buy the pearl, <laughs> then they will learn so much from 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 our segment. They will, it'll, there won't be any anxiety. They won't be left with any fear or any doubt or they will only ever believe in themselves. And what's one thing they can do right now because we're going to blast it. So I'm assuming you guys will get this up. Uh, if Lene's in a feisty mood, it'll be done real quick. And then suddenly <laughs> we'll send the email out and people will come watch it and they'll go, right, I want to get on the summit. What's the one thing they can do? Because it's in a couple weeks. What's the one thing that they can do starting right now to, to set the stage, to get things rolling as, 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 until the summit kicks off in June? You mean for themselves, the, the, apart from registering for the summit, but something... That, besides specific, all that, what's the one thing they can start all doing that, right now? Tiny little that. action step. Start noticing their belief in money. Ooh, ooh, ooh. How big is $97? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. And, and notice whether you feel like you're a, a money victim or a money victor. So yeah. that's, that's definitely a key thing to start being aware of. And notice if you put money into the factor when deciding to come join us. Oh my God! It's what twenty five dollars. Yeah, yeah, and it, and, and it's like forty nine dollars if you have the recordings. Yes. I I don't know if I, I can afford all that, all that. I can afford all that. I, I all that. My my answer to you is: Can you afford not to? Not to. <laughs> and what is so, it costing you? So that? British. <laughs> so British. I thought you were going to say that. Thank you, darling. Spiffing. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Nice. Thank you. Do you know, this is the only time I sound posh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but that's the way, you know, that's the way it plays. It, it really begins with, well, you know, the thing, the thing is, I've often heard it said, you know, when you sign up for something or have the intention to, that's when it really starts. Because you almost, you know, when you have it in your mind, that's almost 
automatically you be, things begin to change you see things shift in your life you start noticing something you have a conversation with somebody something comes in the mail something comes in your in your email or in your banks something shifts and it usually of course appears to coincide with an event like that but it's really because you've met you know we know it's because it's, it's manifesting but for somebody who's not that familiar they'll suddenly go how coincidental that this just happened, or I noticed this, or I had this conversation just around the time I was planning to, or that when I heard about this event coming up. Yeah, yeah just do it, move. Yeah, otherwise you'll always be stuck. Mm -hmm. In the same yeah. place, like this In time right here. Yeah. It'll be the same. That's right. Same old. Yep. That same shit, different day scenario. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's what that's where the change comes from, you know, and it's it and and you start noticing the things that you're afraid of the, th the things that um, hold you back. So those things start coming up too. Mm -hmm. 20. Thank you for your time this evening. Well, yeah. it's evening my time. Thank you for your time this at your morning, morning. <laughs> and your afternoons, Lena and Val. Have a lovely day, ladies. Thank you, guys. This was extremely good fun. Let's do it again sooner rather than later. And uh, have a wonderful day, evening. Where, where, where do they need to go? Let's make sure everyone knows where to go. So they need to go to the nevillegoddardsummit.com. And we'll put, the, we'll put the link in the description. Yes. nevillegoddardsummit.com. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thanks, ladies. Right, see Have you a guys. lovely day. Angie. Good love to Victoria. Big hug. <laughs> we want Victoria on. Oh, you guys got to talk to her. That'll be good. Fun. <laughs> All right. We will. We'll, make it. We'll, we'll manifest it. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye, Bye guys. guys. Bye. Bye.